Okay, let's do a problem on thermal expansion. The thermal expansion is something we mostly know a little bit about. This is an example of a part that undergoes uh, big thermal changes. This is a valve off a large diesel engine. It's pretty good size. It's a lot bigger than the valves you normally see in a car or a motorcycle or something. And we all know that when metals get hot, they expand. If we don't take that expansion into account, we can design parts that are going to fail in normal use. This part gets very hot during normal use. If it's not designed to expand and if the structure that holds it isn't designed to account for thermal expansion, a couple things might happen. It might not be able to move back and forth inside the engine. It might even break and broken valves are a big, big problem. You break a valve inside an engine, you're gonna, your, your engine's not going to make it. So let's take a simple problem here. Um, if you've ever seen a construction site where people are digging a trench or uh, to bury maybe a piece of pipe or uh, wires or something like that, there's always a, uh, a bar, metal structures across the trench to hold the walls up to keep the walls from uh, perhaps collapsing. So I've got a trench here, it's really big, it's nine meters across, and I've got a steel bar across it with E of uh, 207 gigapascals. The, uh, diameter of the tube is 80 millimeters and it's got a 5 millimeter wall thickness so it's pretty heavy but it's fairly thin. All right. What I want to do is I want to find the force in the tube due to a temperature change of 10 degrees Celsius. So this is one of those problems that we see sometimes in strength of materials. We don't necessarily know how to solve this problem directly but we do know how to do is break it into two sub-problems, solve both of those, and then combine the answers. That's what we're going to do here. So the strategy is we're going to take this bar, pretend there's no uh, restraint on it at all, calculate how far it expands under a temperature change of 10 degrees C, and then find out how much force it would take to compress it back down by that same amount. That's going to be the force that it generates as it's generated by a 10 degree C change when the ends can't move. All right, so let's do that. So we'll start. We're going to find delta L due to delta T. Find the change in length due to the change in temperature. And the expression is pretty simple, fortunately. It's alpha L delta T. Alpha is a coefficient of thermal expansion. Now this is a material property. All materials have their own coefficient of thermal expansion. And the units are kind of funny. It's 1 over temperature change. In, in English units it's 1 over degree F. In the metric system it's 1 over degree C. This is not obvious at first. What it really is, it's units divided by, or units of length divided by units of length divided by temperature change. So it's actually a change in strain per degree C or degree F, but strain is unitless, it's length over length. So this and this are the same thing. Right. So let the, in the uh, change in, uh, I'm sorry, the coefficient for thermal expansion for steel is 11.7 times 10 to the minus 6 per degree C, so it's a really small number. The changes in length are not going to be very big. We're going to find out this is on the order of a millimeter. It's not very much, but it's going to generate a surprisingly large force, perhaps. So let's go ahead and work this out. This is 11.7 times 10 to the minus 6, and with a 1 over degree C there. We make this uh, uh, very obvious here so we can uh, check our units. Always check your units. Times 9 meters, that's the length, times 10 degrees C. That's my change in temperature. Degrees C and degrees C cancel out. I'm going to get meters as length. Well, that's what I want. And you get 0 0.00, make sure I get this right here, 1053 meters. That's tiny. That's 1.05 millimeters. So even though the bar is 9 meters long, it's got that little teeny change in length. I'm going to write that up here because I'm going to run out of space on my board here. Okay, so that's part one of the problem. We now know how far the bar is going to uh, 
expand or how far it would expand if there were no uh, constraints on the end. The ends were free to move. And it's a very small number. So let's find out how much force that actually generates. Okay, so step two. required to compress the tube 1.053 millimeters. We know how to do that too. That's an expression that's you pick up at the beginning of most strength of materials classes. That's delta L equals F L over A E. Change in length equals force times length times cross sectional area times the elastic modulus. The only thing we don't know right now in this expression is F, which we're trying to find out and A, which we can calculate real quickly. Um, this is one of several valid expressions for figuring out area. Normally you see area of a circle is expressed in, as pi r squared. It's sometimes more convenient to work in terms of diameter, so it's pi over 4 times diameter squared. The big D is outside diameter. The little d is inside diameter. So the big D here is 80 millimeters, 0 0.08 meters. Little d is 0.07 meters, 70 millimeters. Now this is one of the mistakes I see my students make sometimes, in that when they go from outside diameter to inside diameter, they'll sometimes only subtract the wall thickness once. Um, if I were to give this problem as perhaps a quiz in class, I'm sure somebody in the class would decide the inside diameter was 75 millimeters. It's not. It's 70 millimeters. When you do this, make sure you subtract the wall thickness twice. So let me uh, put some numbers in here. So that's 0 0.080 meters squared minus 0 0.070 meters squared. All right, and that works out too. Again, real tiny number. 117.8. Squared. Okay, so I'm going to put that up here too. Zero, zero, one. Did I get this right? Um, seven, eight, one meters squared. All right, so let's go ahead and put this area and everything else in there. But we're also going to have to rearrange this expression a little bit to put F on one side of the equal sign. So let's do that right now. I don't know F. I do know everything else in that expression, so let's just do a quick, a little bit of quick algebra here. And so that F is going to be delta L times A times E over L. Same expression, I've just got the thing I don't know on one side of the equal sign and everything I do know on the other. So let's go ahead and put all those numbers in. My delta L is 0 0.001054. Three meters times my area, which I now know, seven, eight, one times e, which is a big number here. Newton's per meter squared, all over nine meters. Now, let's do a quick check and make sure all the units work out. Remember, always carry your units through the problem. Sometimes it seems a little awkward to do that, but when you check your units, when you check them all through the problem, you're going to get the right answer a lot more often than if you don't. Okay, so meters squared and meters squared there cancel out. Meters and meters cancel out, and I'm left with newtons. Perfect. I want the answer to be in newtons. And I get 28532 newtons. Okay, 28,532 newtons. Surprisingly big number. 